What is good? We're back. FFD in the house. <laughs> Big D's back with the right name this time. How you doing, dog? How you doing? Hey, all good, man. Back in the his house. Yeah. I'm here to say all dogs got to eat. Even the medium-sized yeah, ones. Yeah, medium, little, you know, handicapped ones. I got a handicapped dog still has to eat. Yeah. You know? In a chair. In a, in a high chair. Mega is soft. People think I'm some sort of pretentious weirdo, and I'm like, no, she's got a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want my, I just don't want my dog not making a mess. That's not something weird, you know? No, she's a messy eater, so we put her in a high chair. <laughs> she likes to sit up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She eats with her pinky out. Um, she has a cigar afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so today we got a little... Um, moves to make for you but you know as like i said in the last show we're kind of getting to the point where i don't know if there's trade deadlines or not but we're, we're going to kind of talk about if there isn't there's some generalities here of of how to trade for picks or how to trade for a first or you know so, some general rules of thumb and, um, and and some examples here i think are and, and how to value some picks a little bit just a general conversation of kind of all that good stuff i think is is something to you know go over and you know Look trading into the, the right way. <laughs> trading the right way, exactly. Uh, you know, f- for future picks. You know, so it's not locked into just this now in case your deadline passed. Trading the right way for future picks. There, nailed it. Um, got it. All right, write so, that down. <laughs> write that down. You know, when when you're going in for firsts or picks in general, um, but I, I think you can with this one. I think you can state first round picks, um, which is a. Tried to get Big Co on this one because this is what, what I'm about to say here is a very Big Co move. I see him in leagues do this shit all the time, and you think it's not going to work, and then all of a sudden you're like, God damn it, he he got he got that really high pick or that really really good player. It's usually for like a higher pick or like a really really upper echelon player, and then you know some you know a couple throw ins or whatever. But basically pile it up to make it look like you're giving away so much. Um, and you know, it's not to say that he won't give away a decent player in there, but he'll then surround that, you know, let's just say above average player for an attempt at somebody like a Bijan or an With attempt at somebody garbage, right? <laughs> right. So, you know, kind of what I'm saying is, is, you know, like he'll, he'll throw in, let's say, um, you know, I don't, I don't have the best example offhand. You know, he might, he might throw in like Devonte Smith. All right. Really good player to, let's say we're going after, Bijan or one of the the top guys so he'll give you Smith but then he'll give you just as much garbage as he possibly can on his team and it's not all garbage thirds and fourths he'll, and well he'll, you know the move is he'll give you you know maybe uh maybe a second from three years from now a third from this year and a fourth from another year so all you know when you look at it it looks like you're getting a full another draft but they're from maybe from different years um and then you know you pile on maybe like Somebody like a Romeo Dobbs, and then you know maybe um, somebody else who's who's half decent, uh, that, that like a Chuba Hubbard, and you know just keep throwing bottom of the roster guys that could start for you, have some potential to be good, but just piles it up around a really good player, or you know, or or a above average player that normally it'd be really hard to go get this top end player, and he did it without really giving up. You know, typically that's like, you know, a bunch of first round picks plus something else to get over that hump to get one of those, you know, fringe end of the first round, top of the second round type players like a Bijan or a CD Lamb or, you know, whatever. So, you know, kind of one of the things that you can do and, and you could say, hey, that that'll never work. And it's like in a lot of this stuff, you could say that this that we're about to talk about was well, that would never work in my league. And it's like, yeah, well. I, I, I say, how the hell did that happen all the time in a bunch of <laughs> leagues? Um, yeah. So, you know, we talk about it all the time. Trade etiquette. Don't get mad when somebody sends you something like that because you might get mad and lose a trade partner over it when he's he's over there sending that to six other guys and all he needs is one. He just needs one. Um, and he's probably done the enough rule deals. Of numbers, yeah. He just has done enough deals to know who's who and what's what. Uh, and is able to figure out, you know, and it's just you find the right combinations of guys to, you know, give give you a Khalil Herbert in there and give you a Chuba Hubbard in there and a Romeo Dobbs and a two, three and a four for a bunch of different picks and, and that above average player. And all of a sudden you're like, damn, how the hell did you how the hell did you pull that off? 
Like it doesn't mm-hmm. even make sense. Uh, you know, throw in Malik Willis and in a super flex league and, you know, Sam Darnold, just throw it, just give them, you know, the, all of a sudden the season like, oh, right now, it kind of feels like buying stocking stuffers, right? right like, you know, right. you're buying stuff. He, 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 he's plugging in some of those, you know, Skittle candy canes and right. some, you know, <laughs> right. some, some stuff that like in, in, in regular context, it's like whatever, but you know, the, the kids or whatever are dumping out that stocking and it's, there's a couple really cool things sticking out the top, but the rest of it's, you know, full of, you know, stuff let's right. say that's, that's not as, right. as highly valued. Right. And, and that, and that's kind of how the trade is, uh, is you know also known as four four quarters for a dollar type of uh, type 100%. of deal, but but in this case it's three quarters, uh, a dime, some, some pennies, dryer you lint. know, like yeah, <laughs> uh, yep, dryer lint, an, a mint, a Werther's original, mm-hmm. like, and then you know then we get there. So right, and you know, like I said, not always going to work, but some people just. And, and, you know, and maybe that'll be the only time that person does it. Maybe after a year, they're like, oh, fuck, you know, I got, I got him. But like, you know, a new guy gets in the league. That'll be a big co-move immediately. You know, a new mm-hmm. guy takes over a spot. It's send all this shit over. Try to overwhelm him because the team's probably not good. If somebody else took it over, they might have a good one really good player or two. And bang. Oh, look at this. I can rebuild with just look at all the stuff I just got. And you know, all of a sudden you're looking around. And you're like, damn, that, that wasn't a whole lot of stuff. That was just that was just some <laughs> sidewalk junk that was going out to the trash. Um, right. So anyway, uh, that was m- kind of my first point there. Pile it up, make it look like a lot. The four quarters for a dollar, or, or you know, seventy-five cents for a dollar. How, how can we get? How can I give you seventy-five and figure out how to get that buck? Uh, a la Big Co. Shout out to you. What for do you real? got, Big D? You got you got a, a move to make for us? I mean, that, you know, in the similar vein is is valuing second year picks versus you know first year future picks, right? So mm-hmm. so in other words, you know, sometimes we're like, you know, you can't get um, we'll use Mike Evans as an example. He's just been killing it this year. You know, uh, you want to try to trade him, and you know, you're probably not going to get a 24 first for him. 24 set or 24 second is probably where you're where you're at. And so then the question is, is okay. Well, is it worth giving up Mike Evans for a 24 second, or is it worth uh, maybe upgrading to that 25 first, right? And so that's kind of one of the things I do is is a, okay. I know this player is older. I know I know where we're at. I'm looking at this team. You know, I give him Mike Evans. I know he's aging. Can can I get that 25 first? Because I feel like, a, I'm going to have a better value in the long run with that with that 25 first. A little bit more flexibility, if you will. And B, you know, especially if I'm if I'm really in tune with my league and I'm I'm looking at his roster, you know, I might be projecting that his 25 first could be at this point in time could be a mid to to, to early first, right? So now now I'm killing on that value. So that's one of the one of the items that I like to do is just if I got some of those aging guys and I'm doing a rebuild, I'm, I'm looking for some of those future, future picks that I can, you know, go out there. I, I don't know if I'd go to 2026 class, you know, I don't, I don't go that far out typically. Um, I, I, in fact, if I'm, if I'm in a league and people are trading their first that far out, I, 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 I pipe in and say, Hey, make sure they pay, <laughs> right? Like yeah. pay for that season. If they're trading those first, like right. I think that should be a general rule is if, if you trade a first from a future class, you should have uh, paid for that season already, you know, yeah. but, um, but, the, but that's a commissioner podcast where we're just talking about uh draft trick. So, so that's one of the ideas that, what do you guys think of that? As, as, tr- instead of getting a, a mid to late second this year, seeing if I can get that first, maybe I have to give a third to do it, but, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it's a, it's a future first and, and, I feel like I'm feeling pretty good at that point. No, I think it's I think it's a good point because you know I think another point we'll make here in a minute is kind of like what 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 else to add to Evans to get the pick this year and get it done. But I think that's a, a and also a good approach is maybe you know like you said kicking it down the road a year to the to the well, obviously we're in the 24 class this year, but say hey you know I can't get a 20 I'm not going to get the 24 first from somebody. Um, they're just not going to give it to me for Mike Evans. I couldn't get that two years ago for Mike Evans. I'm not going to get it now. Right. Um, 10 straight seasons with a thousand yards. I know. Um, but, you know, kicking it down to the to the 2025 first, because, you know, typically I I will say, hey, you know, that's I'm a I'm if I, if it's a, a two year in, in advance pick, that's basically I'm viewing that as like a, a round later. So like a first in 25 is a little bit more like a second right now to me in that year. So, Hey, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting the second, but then, you know, if you wait a year or you can use it in further trades, Hey, I got, I got already have another, an extra first in 25. So maybe you can find somebody who values that 25 a little better. And I think sometimes even strategically, if you're looking at a contender team 
and you're saying, hey, he might give you something decent for Mike Evans. And it's like, well, it's a contender team now. But hey, he, he does have Derrick Henry and he does have Austin Eckler and he does have these guys. And, and the shelf isn't completely restocked down here, but he wants to win again. He's going he's trying to win two out of three league years in cash. So he doesn't really care. So, hey, you know, maybe I do kick that thing down down the line for the next year because the team might be a little worse and he's not really worried about that. He's just trying to get this guy and win. And maybe you do have to add the third, but could be really advantageous to do so. Right. So I, I you know, I think, I think there's a lot of different angles there. So I, I like that. Um, you know, I think, um, a, another extension of, of kind of that move to make is then adding kind of a little bit of the combination of the first two things that we've talked about is, you know, you can go that route with like a, an older player like Mike Evans, but you know what, how do I again kind of pile up Mike Evans to figure out how to get that first from, you know, a computer? Do I have to, do I have to, you know, in that case, usually I'm trying to give up something old, something maybe I just drafted, but maybe in the third or second round. And then, you know, something with some hope that that's, you know, down, down on the bottom of a roster that, that got kicked down the, kicked down the, the, the line a little bit, like, you know, for, for the last couple of years, it would have been somebody like Michael Gallup for me. Like if I was on the opposite right. side of the trade, I wouldn't mind getting Michael Gallup back in that situation because he could turn into a nice little wide receiver two or three. Um, so, you know, you kind of given you a, 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 a new and old and then like kind of a hopeful that has been good, but hasn't really reemerged in a while. Like, so stacking up again, players to try to, you know, say, Hey, I'm, I'll give you Mike Evans, but how can I get your first out of you this year or, or extra picks out of you and you, you kind of package up more things um, and throw you kind of everything. So it doesn't seem like you're just, you're kind of taking the, the sting off of that. You're just getting this old guy to maybe win this year. You can maybe add some other things that aren't super valuable to your roster right at this minute, um, you know, and, and be able to elevate that player that you're getting from Mike Evans or the pick that you're getting from Mike Evans. So little combo platter of the two things that we just talked about there. And maybe like a Rashad white, right? Like throwing, throwing a player like that, that's producing really well, right. but you know, now, you, you, in my, yeah, in my opinion, you know, the long-term outlook on him is, is, is a little questionable. So maybe I'm like, okay, can I, can I take Evans? Can I take white, ch- turn this into a first and get an Adunze? I think I would do that. Right. Like, and right. that's, that's the way it, it works in my brain. That's how I think about it. And so that's, that, that's kind of one of those items where I can trade a little bit of, of something now and, and knowing that I get that in the future. Um, I, I would say the one caution though, right. The, if we're, we're driving down the road and we have these warning sing- singles, if you're a rebuilder, you're getting trading away Evans. And, and I know Bitco's actually brought this up on a show and he's, he said it multiple times throughout the years. But the one thing that you don't want to do is give away your second. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to get that first, you're trying to give Mike Evans, you're you're a rebuild team. You're going to be in that, you know, the, the <laughs> you're going to be in the top of the draft. Right. Because you're you're going to earn it because your team is, you know, you're 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 parsing your team out don't give away your second to get that first like because right. you're only moving up at that point you may be only moving up a few spots right. right you may be only moving up three or four spots and that just doesn't make sense so i said my third in that in that thing and i'm, I'm willing to give my thirds and my fourths on a mm-hmm. on a rebuild you know you know you know not not I'm yeah. not going to give it for no reason, but, 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 you know, your second is really valuable, especially if it's a high second, your first is really valuable uh, in both seasons, this current season and your future season. So just, yeah. just keep that in mind as you're, as you're, as you're going through and building some of these, you know, uh, don't, don't give away the farm just to get that first um, yeah. or yeah, you don't, don't move up three spots just to get the first, you know? So, right. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good point. I think, um, you know, <clears throat> the fact that you are adding um, kind of the Rashad White in there, and Mike Evans is trying to get something like that done. You know, you're 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 saying, hey, I'm going to get rid of a player that I don't I, that was really good this year. I don't have a ton of confidence moving forward, so now maybe I can get a first plus something else from it. You know, you're just elevating that. You're making him not feel as bad. Maybe you can get a little bit more, and you can get a pretty good deal done for yourself. So, um, right. you know, I don't I don't hate something like that. You know, like Tony Pollard. Um, and Cortland Sutton, you know, could I, what, what can I get for that? Cause you know, maybe, maybe this year it looks, you know, I, I can help somebody win. Um, but you know, next year, Tony Pollard's 27 or 28 and the year after that, you know, 
or, or and and then Cortland Sutton's 28 29 and you know maybe maybe that even helps somebody out the year after that and you know every trade doesn't have to be I fucked the other guy um it can still be a right. pretty good deal for both of you guys and you know you got rid of some aging assets that that could flame out really at any point but maybe maybe they still are good for two years but you still got your deal done you still right. feel good about the, the parts and pieces that you're getting back you're getting younger and hopefully better so um yeah I, I like I like adding adding those things into there. And then to add on another one of your points, um, you know, when you were saying that if you're the rebuilding uh, side of that, don't give away the two. If I'm on, you know, really the rebuilding side of that, I'm, I'm always, or really any side of any deal, like I'm always trying to figure out how I can get the fourth out of like, cause people, once you get in deep into trades and you want to get something done, people will give you force for nothing. And yeah. you know, and I'll, I will too. I'm not. I'm not saying that I won't. But I'm always trying to get that other pick, throw, that late pick that doesn't. But but that'll just those those can compound compound interest uh, mm-hmm. over time. And if you have a couple threes and a couple fours, that can help you move up spots and drafts that you know people weren't thinking about it. And now you know it's it's not about necessarily even making the third or fourth round pick. It's about having two threes and two fours. Now I can throw you know two threes and a four at somebody and try to move move up into the second round or move my second pick up with with a three and a four and still have a three and a four. So, um, you know, don't, don't belittle besmirch the, those, those late round picks, uh, always, you know, if it, if that's what it takes to get a big time deal done, that's what it takes to get a big time deal done. But on the other end of things, I'm always trying to collect those, those later things. Um, and I'm always trying to get a throw in player like a Jalen Hyatt when I, or a, or a Cedric Tillman when I'm doing those deals, like, can I get a fourth and Jalen Hyatt and just try to find those pieces that and we're now People we're on don't the, care about, right? We're on the other side of this kind of a little bit where we were kind of talking about getting a first, but it's really just talking about trades in general, but like finding the parts and pieces that nobody care. They're like, Oh yeah, I'll give you a four and Jalen Hyatt. What do I give a shit about? Like, and maybe Jalen Hyatt ends up being nothing clogs your roster or you cut him, but maybe he comes out week two and catches three bombs from Danny dimes and, and has 102 touchdowns. And you're like, all right, now we got we got more capital in that piece, compounding interest once again, and and yep. we're able to either include Hyatt in another trade at some point, or you know just say, hey, I can start Hyatt here soon, or Tillman, or you know those, those those guys who have been drafted over the last year or two and kind of forgotten. Chase Brown just broke off a run in this game and watching the Bengals game. Nobody cares at all about Chase Brown. Nobody cares about Evan Hall right. at this point. He's been on IR all year, and they mm-hmm. just signed JT. Like, but look at Zach Moss having a little bit of a role there and being good. And Evan Hole, like people have already forgot Evan Hole was great in the preseason, you know. So just yeah. always be trying to get that little edge back um, in in a, in a lot of deals. Again, right. don't let it kill a big deal. Yeah, you um, can't right. let it kill a deal. But you could start with the twenty five third, and then work your way to the twenty four fourth, and then go to the twenty five fourth or whatever. Yeah. Because you know these are just pieces you can use to make moves while you're in the draft or if you can't make the move then you just take stabs on guys that we're going to tell you who to pick because we know how to pick third and fourth round picks i love making those picks Mm -hmm. so whether you use it or use it to to move up like just try and strategy and each try and squeeze that late pick in love yeah 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 i think one of the things i don't want to gloss over is is um is, is create a, a rapport, right? Don't, mm-hmm. don't try to screw people. Like, yeah. uh, you know, it's always fun when you have these, these big deals and, and you feel like you're the, the, the landslide winner, but you know, there's, there's also repercussions from those kind of actions too. You know, when yeah. you pull the, 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 the wool out from under somebody's eyes, I mean, they're, they're going to be a lot more hesitant to trade with you because they don't want to get bashed in the, in the chat or they don't want to do that. So, you know, like, like most of my trades, I, I try to I, I try to see how can I help this other player, and, and also how can I tell the story that this is you know I'm, I'm not trying to tell them how to run their team, but I'm trying to give them enough breadcrumbs to get there uh, right. on their own, right? right. Like I'm uh, you know, like in you know I know this we're talk, we're talking about trading for first, but um, we're just talking about trading uh, early last trade. season. Yeah. I, I traded um, London and um, Najee Harris. And I think like a third for um, CMC in a second, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time, it's like, man, that's a lot of that's a lot of youth on a team that I'm, I don't have a lot of youth on, right? right? But I was going for it. CMC got hurt last year, and it hurt my my playoff runs. But the point is, is that now 
Drake London and, and Najee Harris haven't had the greatest years, but but my thought process with that was these guys are going to help this, you know, help him reboot his rebuild right away, right? He he took over an orphan. It's going to help him right away, and it's going to help me. And so, you know, trying to piece together um, items like that is is I think also important in the long term of of a dynasty league because hopefully. You know, we, we, we joke about, well, who knows if the Dynasty League is going to be around. But and, and I know that the, I don't know what the industry number is, but yeah. but I mean, I have a few Dynasty Leagues now that are five, six years old, you know, yeah. and so I've you know, never been in one that folded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I normally leave before it folds, uh, yeah. not, not because it's going to fold, but because, uh, you know, something happened in life or whatever. So right. so so I think it's I think it's important just to, to you know, to, to that that little point of like. That, that's not to say that you have to screw yourself or you, you, you know, sometimes you, you, and sometimes I do, sometimes I'll take a little bit less value because I think I'm going to get value on the, on the long run. But, but, but my point is, is I'm not, you know, waxing somebody, I'm not trying to trade, you know, Todd Gurley with his, with his injured leg because I, the other dude didn't see the news yet. Right. right and, right. and so I'm trying to, trying to get him off my roster. Like, like don't, don't play that way. That's, that's yeah. cheap. You know, it's, it doesn't feel good. Um, or at least to me, it doesn't feel good, but, yeah. uh, so, yeah. so one other item for, for this particular draft class, when you've got a draft class coming in 2025, we don't know, right? But at this point, we're not really feeling the running backs. What do you do at this point? Like, like you're maybe you're a rebuilder. You rebuilt this last year. You're not doing the greatest. So you've got some draft picks that are going to be a little bit higher, but maybe you're in the middle, middle echelon and you're looking at your team and maybe you had Justin Jefferson there or you had some players that were injured most of the season, or maybe you had Danny Dimes, right? And he's, he's been out most of the season. So like when, when do you pull the trigger to say, Hey, I look at this upcoming uh, class. I don't like the running backs. I feel like I can be competitive next year. Maybe this is where I go and I try to move my first for for a running back. Is that is that now? Is that during the off season? What what is what are your guys' thoughts? It just depends for me. Um, that, that 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 is going to come into play of like you know do you do you go in now before the rest of everybody catches up on when these running backs are going to be drafted, um, or do you try to figure out? You know, like for me, it's like I kind of need a little bit more information on these running backs to just see if are the wide receivers just really good and and the other skills are really good. There goes the stocking again. Um, <laughs> so it's pushing the running backs down or, you know, I, I don't know that there, there certainly doesn't seem to be a generational talent of running back, but that doesn't mean there isn't one that can't help your team. I mean, look at a Chan, uh, you know, a Chan, um, right. you know, look at, look at him, you know, really helping you out. You know, Tajay Spears, you know, if, if could, could be helping you out in a year. Um, so I think that's a good question. I don't have, I don't think I have the best answer for you. What, what do you think? So the question is trading a first for running back. Just like basically trying to get ahead of the, like saying, Hey, there isn't a, a whole lot of running backs in this class that you feel super psyched about, or are, are at least high end assets right now. When's the point that you maybe use your first to go after an existing running back? Yeah, and I'm just using that as an example because this this upcoming class, it seems like it's running back light. There's been other classes where it's tight end light. There's other classes where the wide receivers don't seem as great or the quarterbacks don't seem as great. So so whatever the position is, uh, just because it's an um, – you know, most of the mocks that you see out there um, have your running backs in the late first to, to early second. Is yeah. kind of from a from a dynasty perspective is what we're looking at. So, so the question is, is like when what is, is this time right now the time where you go out and maybe kick the tire, tires on on um, you know Williams and Denver or you know you know somebody like that and try to see if you can get your first or do you wait till the off season? Um, is, is the advantage to wait to the off season when your first, your, 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 your first is going to build value. Yeah. But, but so, everybody I mean, also knows that the positional value may not be there too. So I, it's kind of, the only reason you're trading for a running back is if you're ready to go. So that it behooves you to do that in season. Otherwise, I mean, I'm keeping my draft pick until I'm probably on the clock because, and, and in that same notion of saying like it, it's running back light, I, I don't, I don't think it is. There's some really intriguing running backs in this class. They're just not like the high end prospects that we've we've seen, and so none of them are, you know. But the but the wide receivers and the quarterbacks and the tight ends are so top heavy that they're getting pushed in that first round. So like, if you're looking for a running back, 
and you're maybe a few pieces away from competing like and that's one of the things like we need to do a video about you know mistakes to avoid when you're when you're rebuilding is like thinking that you're too far away from your rebuild and just punting and selling all of your good players like mm -hmm. you may only need to sell a few and you may only need to make a couple good moves and one of them may be acquiring a couple extra second round picks so you can take some stabs on these running backs coming up here because yeah. that's where like we've said it you're going to be able to get a, a, a pretty solid running back i mean there's there's probably like, I don't even know who to really put at the top between Trevion and Benson and Corum and uh, there's there's others I'm missing here off the top Braylon of my head. Braylon Allen, R Braylon Allen, Jesus Christ, can't miss that guy. Like there there's some good looking running backs yeah. in this class. They're just not yeah. as exciting as the other ones. So I think I think the second round is where you can come in and make a trade yeah. for one of those guys, or if you want to move your late first for an established, you know, I think Javante is a pretty decent stab there. Um, you know, that's probably another show of like who to target to bolster your running back room to make a push for a championship and nobody wants to watch that video because everyone's trying to rebuild and it's so cool to rebuild and like <laughs> uh, i don't i just don't think many people are playing for that much money to where when you're in a league with where there's a decent pot involved the right. the running back value is so much different than what it is on dynasty twitter you know mm -hmm. it's 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 like if you have any running back you could turn them for a huge profit so it's like it's easier to rebuild in those leagues because nobody wants to because it's expensive and and you don't. yeah so yeah it, so it I, I think yeah I, I completely I'm fine. agree with both both of your takes there I I think for me it's just um it's a lesson of being don't be Nostradamus right like just because this running back room coming in looks light or it seems light or you see all the drafts and they're late to, to early first or, or uh, early seconds like you said Jay there's that you you routed off a bunch of names there so there's some there so. So the reason why I wanted to bring it up was because, you know, I've got a couple teams where I'm like, I think next year could be the year where I'm going to push and, and, and go for it and stuff, but I'm not going to make a lot of those moves unless I'm getting a blue chip, right? Mm -hmm. Like, can I get Gibbs? Can I get a, a Chan? Can I get, you know, I, I, I like Jamal, um, or, uh, Javante Williams, you know, mm -hmm. I like, I like those kind of players. I, I love Mo Montgomery. Like, you know, I might, might look at that and see, see value wise, but I think the play is, and when we're talking about these first is is the closer you get to the the clock ticking on that draft pick the higher that value is going to go so yeah. so uh, so i'm i'm kind of with you it's like it, it's it's hard to answer because i, d I don't know if there is a, a a real great answer but but i i think like in my opinion i'm i'm waiting till off season till yes. nfl draft till till my draft and then i'm going to see what kind of value i can i can pull from that or yeah. or or maybe i know that my uh, i have a mid first right and so i'm like I really want to target some of these running backs. So maybe I move back into that second round while I'm on the clock and get, get some additional pieces and stuff. So I, I think that, um, I think that that's, um, yeah, I, I think that answers the, the question. So I, thanks boys. I think, I think I can, I think I can kind of tie one of the last things I have together with that. And just, yeah. you know, one of my thoughts was kind of what Jason was saying there. Um, and then you, you said it a little bit too. Um, I think now at this point, you know, I think I think with the first, I think you stick around and you say, hey, we're going to gain value with this thing. Um, you know, the 2023 class might have went backwards a little bit as far as the season went on. And maybe people said started thinking that the the, the play that maybe the first round wasn't as valuable as it was. Uh, there also, you know, wasn't, you know, a crazy amount of quarterbacks in that class that made anybody excited. There, there has been some. And now we've seen some of these quarterbacks fade out a little bit. Um, right now, but they could they could come back. I think the first round is going to stay pretty strong because like right now we're we're talking about pretty elite assets t to like one eight at this point. Um, and I think so the first round is going to stay pretty strong here. So I think the value and the insurance policy of your first just keep it, hang on to it and then mm -hmm. figure out who you want to make the move with right now in season. Um, I think what you can do if you're thirsty running back wise, uh, which I think there's probably, you know, half your league probably is. I think you can kind of and this is the other kind of uh one of the last little pillars things that I have is like when, when to re-roll essentially. So I think right now you might be able to try to take some of those guys uh, that, that you had that are, are good, but you're, you're not super confident that they're going to be great or they're they're They've maybe maxed out in their value and it's not like elite. So, you know, you can re-roll that in and now knowing like, Hey, I can be maybe try to be one step ahead of these guys that maybe, maybe a Penix or a Knicks or, you know, a quarterback that you likes gets pushed to the second Plus, there's going to probably be five, six, seven running backs that most likely are going to be in a where we're talking super flex tight end premium, um, most likely going to be in the in the second round. So there you can try to take like, 
your Romeo Dobbs. And maybe it's like, hey, it's time, maybe it's time to re-roll Romeo. It's nothing against Romeo. I think Romeo is a good player. I think he has a chance to, to, to really flourish in this system moving forward. Young, young, uh, young core. And, but, you know, right now it looks like they got a lot of, lot of really good pieces there. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know who's going to emerge as being the, 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 the dominant alpha number one. So, hey, maybe I could get a two plus a little something for Romeo or, you know, maybe I can take, you know, s- some of those running backs like fr- from from this last class and say, hey, I, you know, that I drafted that. Hey, what can I add to this guy to get a, get my second back? Like, you know, what can I add to what can, can I trade Tank Bigsby and something else to, to the ETN guy and get a get a second from him? Or, you know, can I can I Kate, can I trade Kendra Miller? Not that I want to, but and, and maybe get something back for him like. We Try, just moved Zach Moss to the JT owner right. for a second. You can deal with it. You're getting injuries right now piling up. We, we moved Zach mm-hmm. Moss for a second. So you can get the second. You can start re-rolling guys. You know, what are you going to get for, for Jerome Ford? I'm not saying that I would just trade him for a second straight up, but you could probably get a second plus plus right now for Jerome Ford. I think he's a good player, and I, he was a stash for me last year, so you made money. Um, you know, you're not getting a first from him most likely, so you, can, you might even be able to get a two here and a two next year for him. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, right now for somebody. So right now you could capitalize on some of these guys who could help somebody and or moving forward of saying like, hey, these were guys that somebody in my league liked. And that comes down to the last thing is like kind of know your league and what they like and who they like and who, you know, I always try to keep a dialogue with guys and try to try to squeeze a little bit of information out when we're friendly bantering back and forth. And whether I, whether they're putting me on or not, like I try to file that stuff away of like, Oh yeah, you know, well, I did send a trade with this guy and that, that did, he didn't like them. And he, he kind of was, was lukewarm on that trade. Cause that guy, but Hey, when I added this guy to the trade, we didn't get it done, but he, he kept coming back after this guy. Um, so, you know, I'll just kind of keep a tab on those things and, and, and try to re-roll, you know, players. And I think a lot of people talk about that. And when it's time to re-roll, you know, maybe, maybe you, like I said, you can throw Sutton in and maybe you can get a plus something for other, for that. I mean, Sutton's been around for a while, but you know, time to re-roll, maybe get a little younger, you know, guys like Rashi Rice, I'm not re-rolling the second with, but there may be guys from your second and third round that maybe you can add something to re-roll and then take advantage of what we're looking at right now with the second round being heavily running backs and, and take another swing um, at that right now, like Keaton Mitchell, if, if he comes out and has it, you know, obviously we're getting late in the season here, but people are down running backs or Gus. Can I, can I give you Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell and get a second plus or something like that from somebody? Not, I think Keaton looks great and maybe he will be the future of them because they don't have Gus isn't under contract. Dobbins isn't under contract. I'm just throwing some names out here who are, are there. Maybe, maybe somebody like uh, Charbonnet who, you know, maybe you spent a late first, early second on. What can I re-roll Charbonnet into right now? How confident are you feeling about the Charbonnet Walker thing moving forward? Didn't really play out like you like you thought. Maybe you lost a little confidence in there. Can I re-roll? What what can I? How much can I get to re-roll Charbonnet into Zach Corum this year? You know, or right. Trey Benson this year, or even parlay him somehow into Travion or Braylon Edwards or Braylon Allen rather. Um, I don't know if Edwards yeah, is going to come out or not. So. Yeah, I wouldn't play. I wouldn't trade him for Edwards, but yeah, I get you. Right. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed's yeah. been having some good games. You got him in the third. Maybe you could move him up to the second and same reason like Romeo Dobbs. Hey, I don't know who's going to be the guy. Maybe, maybe that ought, maybe love look like he might be good enough to facilitate two or three guys every week. Um, and, it's, and these aren't guys that I'm shitting on by any means, but Hey, maybe, maybe Noah Brown comes in, has a, has a nice little section here. You can, figure out how to right. parlay him into, but trying to acquire these seconds right now, I've had a ton of success in leagues, uh, not even in rebuilds, just, you know, I might still have my first, but like having three or four third or seconds to just yeah. grab St. Brown and grab Ramondre Stevenson and, you know, just be grabbing those guys in, in the second. And, and now I have thirds back there so I can kind of move around in the second and grab the guys that I want. So, you know, bolstering up that second round is, is never, never, never a bad idea. Th- this year, it would have worked out pretty well for you again. So, um, you know, obviously, you, you probably got to hang on to Tajay Spears. But, you know, I think in the offseason, you're going to see a big spike in Tajay Spears value because um, he, he's doing yeah. nothing but performing when he's out there. Um, so stuff like that. Anybody uh, got anything else before we get out of here? No, I think that's I think we've we've covered covered quite a bit. I mean, we've. Uh... You know, I think maybe just to kind of recap, you know, we talked about, um, you know, trading, trading three, three quarters for a dollar, you know, mm-hmm. trying, trying to get some shininess in a, in a package. You know, we talked about, um, 
you know, instead of trading for a, a, a late second this year, seeing if you can get that first uh, uh, next year, um, doing doing some pieces like that. And, you know, what you just talked about, the, um, you know, the uh, the re-roll, the re-rack, you know, mm -hmm. trying trying to to go that way or, or on the on the flip side of that also just to just to add a little context is is maybe you you believe in, in something that's happening and, and right. you think that, you know, you, you could you can try to capitalize on some of that reroll. I'm I'm not a big Mingo fan, but you know Mingo right now is is pretty down. So can I can I reroll him in a different way? Can I send a second for Mingo and get a first round wide receiver? You know, um, yeah. And then and then we just talked about you know don't 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 we we have to try to project the future. We have to try to see that, but we don't want to be Nostradamus. We we don't know how great or how bad this class is going to be for us positional piece and so um don't don't think that you know the 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 reports coming out right now or even the ones right after the end of the season that the class is going to be x because as you said the 2023 class went from the greatest class in the world the worst class that you could ever be a part of because of how many people went back to oh it's a pretty decent class right so, so right now there's oh, fucking pillars of people's dynasty teams who are hinging on these 23 people that have are taking them into the playoffs exactly yeah they just completely rebuilt off of one class and so right. so it's just you know it's 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 hard so anyways i just kind of wanted to recap because yeah, i know I we were all over there and and hopefully that helps you and hey if you have some advice some um some words of wisdom you've lasted this long and you you're we like wait they didn't say my words of wisdom throw it in the comments <laughs> for us man to let it let it. us know you know throw it in there yeah there's 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 so many guys that you know it's I, we try to practice patience around here so I try not to get terribly caught up in re-rolls, but it's, again, not going to break a deal for me. Or if I think a guy has peaked in his value, like, you know, Romeo, Dubs, I think, you know, I wanted to see another year here and what happens. And, you know, am, do I, am I dying to get rid of Dubs? No, but if I could re-roll him into something else that was, that, that you know, another second round pick to see if you, could, if you could catch lightning in a bottle with somebody, you know, I may. Jacoby Myers, you know, can I get two, you know, there's just a plethora of guys. It's, it's no real shade on those guys. Well, it's just like... You know, I, I try to practice patience. I've practiced some patience on those guys and it's worked out. And, and some of those other guys, it's like they've kind of just held where they are. And, you know, Nico Collins has happened. It, it, you know, if, yeah. if you're if you're into a guy, like you said, and you think he's going to explode, then, you know, this is dynasty it's supposed to be fun. Hang on to your right. guys. Like if you have faith in Mingo, hang on to him. Or if you're like, hey, I, I need to get out now. And even even if the value is down, sell and just get something, get two thirds and move on. Um, and yeah. you know, be, you know, just don't be mad if he's blows up in, in a year when things are a little better, you know, you just gotta, you gotta take the wins with the losses and, you know, I've gotten ho stuck holding the bag and I've gotten, gotten out at the right time on, on certain guys. How we, we sold, you know, we've sold, uh, we sold JK Dobbins, you know, right before an injury, um, you know, and then, you know, but in that same trade, we got Mac Jones and, and, and sold CJ Stroud. You know, we got Jameer Gibbs. We, we got Gibbs, and there was, there was a whole bunch of other stuff in the package. But like, you know, that that thing kind of went both ways. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know that Dobbins was going to get hurt, but he did, and you know, mm -hmm. he got out, kind of got out at the right time. Now there's no value on Dobbins. You know, uh, obviously there's a ton of value on Stroud. We fucked uh, up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, just just say you know, Gibbs still an awesome player. But like, some people want to get out on JSN. I'm sure I'm fucking still so in on JSN. Like, so yeah. you like on their flip side, you can capitalize on on on, you know, Demario Douglas. I think is a good example. Like, what do you want to do with him? Some people would be like, hey, if I could get if I could get a second for him, I'll I'll take it right now and re-roll. And is that probably the right thing to do? Most likely, yes. You should probably do that. But hey, just because of the situation, just because of a lot of things, you know. But right. you know. But if that's your guy and you're fucking proud to have him on your team, then, you know, fuck it. Like, he's probably still going to be fairly useful. And we're supposed, to be, having, get better. We're supposed to be having fun. And, and the little bit that you saw of him, he was good. So uh, I think you can play that both sides of the, the fence there. So anyhow, you guys ready to wrap this up? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence looks like he just got really hurt. Oh, that's a huge yeah. big, well, big time bummer. Huge, 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 huge bummer for a, for a team I got that is getting yeah. super hot right now and 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 I kind of need Trevor. Anyway, all right. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to be putting out more mocks, startups, rookies. We're going to be having conversations about who, what's, and how's all off season. Uh, hopefully this was a little bit of, of some help from you. Maybe a little bit more theory here than actual uh buy sell hold but you know tried to give you some examples 
along the way of, of you know ideas of what those guys are and I, like I said in the beginning of this like oh that that might that would never happen and might you'd never get that you just never know every league is different know your league know your guys and and you know it just seems like you get a lot of pushback about well that oh that, that guy's undervalued that guy's it's just like dude every league's different man I got leagues where that guy would never go for this and then he goes for way more than that over here so um, you know just don't be afraid if you're afraid by a dog so <laughs> go Huskies go dogs all right appreciate you come see us over on discord give me a five star review on the podcast greatly appreciated uh three extra episodes on the discord channel uh patreon.com backslash the ff dynasty go rubber group t-shirt um follow us on the twitters uh if you got trade questions or team uh evaluations hashtag dynasty trades in the youtube comments and uh we'll be back with more of your dynasty pleasure softest tea in the industry peace